Well, I shouldn't be talking about what everyone else is talking about. Unless I've got something to say that no one else is saying. The Boston situation qualifies. What are the questions no one else is asking? Probably. Uh, number one. Is body armor allowed in Boston? On the torsos of civilians? If so, is it discouraged by any way? Or is it discouraged in any way by authorities? Two. Who has the motive to perpetrate an attack like this? Well, it's true that Islamic extremists, some of them, probably have a motive. Anti-cosmopolitan, uh, anti-cosmopolitan forces in the U.S. could have some sort of motive. That was supposedly what happened around 1996 at the Olympics, where a neo-Nazi some of some form or fashion bombed uh, an area there because he didn't like the racial mixing. People who want chaos, not anarchy, chaos. And yes, at the top of my list, the most likely suspect, the one everyone's talking about on Facebook, the federal government. Or, more accurately, tiny elements thereof. And there's historical precedent, probably for pretty much all these possibilities. Remember the FBI informed us, and apparently no one was listening, that the 918 attacks at, shortly after 9-11 were perpetrated probably by a government agent. Employee, I should say. Three, to what extent are Americans going to take this out on completely uninvolved Muslims? I don't even know if Muslims of any stripe had anything to do with this at this point, because I'm just in the early stages of talking about it. This is, the, this is just the early part of the day after. So, but that's where the finger usually points the fastest. The Americans were at their best after 9-11 where they defended Muslims. There was an incident I remember in Texas where average people swarmed a either a mosque or a Islamic school to help protect everyone who was there. They did patrols. It was sort of like a like a militia defense type of thing. Protecting these people from retaliation. Uh, they, of course, because there had been an incident in Texas where a guy walked into a convenience store and just shot the nearest person who looked like a Muslim. Called it war. The guy was actually Indian. Another question. To what heck extent has the Internet 2.0 brought conspiracism into its own? And, and what effect will that have on who people blame? Yeah, I don't remember any conspiracy theories after 9-11 or after the 1995 Oklahoma City bombings initially. But this time, it was, it was just hours before there were theories backed with media, Unless these were faked, unless the media was faked, these were really pretty compelling allegations implying a false flag attack. To what extent will the democratization of media make large numbers of people question the official story? I don't know, and conspiracism isn't my thing. You spend too much time convincing yourself of something, but it doesn't have much effect on anyone else in the conspiracism path. But I'm glad other people are doing it. I think the 9-11 conspiracism, the more of it that's out there, the more unlikely it is that the government actually would do a false flag attack because they just would expect the people to blame them. It'll be interesting to see how much the American public reacts with its sort of dog-like flag-waving and religious type orientation toward the federal government, its icons, its ministers, its police, the men and women of law enforcement. Or do we look back on this as a sort of paradigm shift where people start treating disasters differently? Terror disasters. Terror disasters.